So today in Critical Praxis, we're continuing the discussion of intersectionality out of Karma Chavez's work in the textbook, or the book, Identity, Research, and Communication uh, by Barden and Norby. And in this discussion, uh, invited by Benny, I would like to talk briefly about how I do um, intersectionality work and how I see it play out in my classrooms. First and foremost, discussing, discussing the notion of intersectionality um, out of Crenshaw's work as the interlocking nature of identity and power. When it comes to my own work, um, typically I've been focusing on this notion of masculinity and LGBTQ communities. So what does it mean to be um, a masculine body? What does it mean to perform masculinity? And how is that different uh, among different cultures? One of the papers that I co-authored with a friend of mine, Brent Adams, was looking at the notion of transformative masculinity and cultural spaces. So how do we understand masculinity in a way that we can attempt to transform what it means to be masculine, um, to envelope or to encompass or invite varying definitions of what it means to be uh, to perform masculine. Looking at this intersectional work, one of the things that I was able to reflect on was just how white this paper was. And so in retrospect, looking back at it through different cultural lenses, looking at it through this notion of um, non-white or bodies of color and how that would help to influence this understanding. Also when looking at this, including other bodies or other identities into this notion. So how does this, this idea of masculinity play out when considering differences between upper class, perhaps um, higher class, or working lower class? Taking those as separate entities, though, isn't really going to work when it comes to intersectionality work. It's a starting point, but it's not necessarily um, helping the intersectional work across here. So understanding then what it means to be perhaps a poor um, or working class white male who performs a masculine identity who also is gay male um, is going to be very different from what it means to be a middle class um, white male or a middle class Latino um, and what that means as well when we consider the notion of is, is this Latino male straight, um, i.e. heterosexual, um, or is he gay? If we then include this and we start thinking about the ways in which um, individuals who are trans or trans bodies, how does that influence this notion um, when considering perhaps class, race, ability, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and the like? In my own classes, um, when attempting to understand intersectionality, what I like to do is first, again, start with that uh, multiplicity of identities. Since identity is not something that is static, um, that it is very much dynamic, um, it can help perhaps for us to understand how identity is playing out in our own lives. And not just the singular notion of identity, but that multiplicity notion of identity that karma um, so eloquently discusses. So first I like to start off with having my students write an I am poem. 10 to 15 phrases that deal with I am but then examining different cultural locations or different positionalities within that. Then from that point, we would typically look and say, oh, look at all the different identities you are. But when we're considering an intersectional approach, we want to then start to articulate what it means to work into a space where each of these identities is in tension with each other, perhaps struggling with each other, or providing privilege with one another while others may be disadvantaging us in certain situations. And so when looking at poems, uh, such as I Am Poems, and pedagogically looking at the notion of intersectionality, for me, for instance, I can look at this and say, as a white, able-bodied male who performs, most often, masculine body, um, who is also gay, how does that experience, and how do those identities tie together to create my own unique individual self? And from that experience, how can I then look at the world um, through the eyes of someone who is disabled uh, or who has a disabled body? Or how do I look through the world um, and try to understand the world from um, a Latina immigrant perspective? 
I can't necessarily from the get-go. Ontologically, I don't have that understanding of being, or epistemologically, I don't understand how to know um, or, or ways of knowing this type of world. And so for me, co-authorship when it comes to research in this area is, is significant and it's important. Ontologically, epistemologically, there are certain experiences that I can never understand or never know. And as researchers, reflectively and reflexively, this is important to understand. And as a white body, having these visible um, majority markers um, that I walk around with every day, that's not necessarily going to be the experience that people are just going to want to give to me as well. And so I think in trying to understand what it means um, for each of us to move through the world, through this dynamic process of identity formation, as well as this everyday changing constitutive nature of communication, it's important for us to be able to engage in these dialogues together um, to try to understand how our identities are being influenced in multiple ways, because we are always walking through the world with all of these identities that we carry, even though in some instances some may be more salient than in others. And so with that said, uh, please continue to do your intersectionality work and continue to have these wonderful conversations.